So just another quick video about the track waveform columns in the browser that's been included in the latest public release of Virtual DJ, which is built 6800 or 6800 at the time of this recording. So what is this thing? Well, um, to get it, you first have to look, look at your settings a little bit. So if I go into settings here, uh, and I go into the options, and then I search for, uh, for experimental, you probably want to have the, uh, the experimental uh, weight colors enabled. Some of this stuff will still work if you don't, but you probably should, and that is actually the default these days, as you can see, there's no egg here. You probably also want to have the experimental skin engine enabled, but that's more so that, or at least set it to auto, but that's more so that this stuff also kind of works uh, in the uh, in the in the info pane uh, more than actually this little part here. But uh, still, that's what I would recommend. This one to either auto or yes, and the experimental wave colors to yes. So that's close to the default. But in 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 in, in case you you've changed it previously, this is pro how, probably how you you want it to be. So what is this feature then? Well, it's a brand new column here in the browser section. So if I right click that, I can uh, choose new columns. So I choose waveform at the down way down here, and I get a new waveform here. So that's basically the new feature. But of course, there's a lot of lot of things we need to talk about with this new feature. So uh, first of all, I'm gonna drag it to be the first one, like this. Oh, sorry, like this, and then probably make it a bit bigger. The expense of some of the other columns, I see. That's okay for now. So now we can definitely see the waveform here. So uh, is that just gonna be there? Well, unfortunately, no, it needs to be generated. As you can see, I have it on, on all the tracks in this folder, but if I go into some of the other folders, like maybe this one, you see very few of them actually right now have a waveform. So uh, why is that? Let's just go back to this one. That's actually because these get generated uh, and stored in a cache. So, uh, if I shut down Virtual DJ for a little while here, like this, you can see I'm now in my documents slash virtual DJ folder slash cache. And in here, there's a cache database, cache DB, and that's where it gets stored. It can't get into the database file because it's binary. So, uh, so that wouldn't make any sense. So, um, so this is the way it is. And is this new? Well, actually, this has been there for a while because it's also used to store other um, waveforms have been for, for a while, at least for a couple of builds. And it's also used in the info pane that I was talking about earlier. And how can we test this? Just to make sure I'm, I'm right. Well, I'm just going to rename this one uh, while Virtual DJ is closed, like this. Now I'm going to open Virtual DJ again, like this. And then you can see now I don't have any waveforms. So they're not there anymore. So, and that's because of course, Visual DJs has seen there's no cached database file. It can fix that because it just basically creates a brand new one. So uh, see, this was the one we had. That's six megabytes of data. And this is 12 kilobytes. It's basically just the new file, right? So uh, now that need all, everything waveform regarded needs to be redone. So if that's where you start from scratch here, what can you do to get these waveforms? You can do at least two things. You can play the track, so it's basically loaded maybe play it, but it's the loading that does it. Or you can reanalyze it. So right click and analyze for BPM, like, like always, and it analyzes it, and done. But as you can see, there's no waveform. And why is that? Well, that's because this cache thing actually get the start and read and, and start up. So uh, I need to, re, uh, to restart virtual DJ once more. So let me just do that. And now I have the two waveforms. The top one was, was generated because I loaded the track in, uh, into a deck, and the second one was generated because I reanalyzed it. So that's how you get these new waveforms, either play the tracks or reanalyze them. So that's basically it. So I'm just gonna go back to the, uh, the old database cache so that I get uh, a few more waveforms to look at. Oh, that's actually wrong. Let's delete this one, and then name this one like that and then when I start with the GA I get them all back so now they're here so uh, 
So where do they come from? Well, actually, as you can see before, if I load one of them, they're just basically mimicking whatever is is in this track waveform, this one and not what is up here necessarily. Of course, that will often be the same uh, if you're using the default settings. But right now, this is not default. I'll get back to that in just a second. So as you can see, they almost always mimic what is up here. Uh, couple of, uh, maybe one exception. We'll get back to that. But right now, as you can see, this is the same. That also means I can change them, of course, by changing what's up here. Um, so if I uh, go into and um, search for waveform here, you can see Instead of uh, having uh, this set to uh, the, uh, the the overview type, which is the one that's here, set to uh, to colors, I could set that to shapes so that it's the same as the top one. And as you can see, that changes it. I just have to go over them like this. So I'm refreshed on the screen. And then if I uh, click one of them, start drawing a little bit, you can see it changes up here. Uh, on the deck as well. Th this is probably not really, really useful, but uh, maybe for some people. That's that's one option. Let me just chase that back to colors and go over them again and grab one over a little bit. So I get it. So now we're back to colors. So of course, there's uh, there's other things you can change. So for, for instance, the frequency. Right now, uh, it's calculated used on frequency because that's set to yes. We can also do it to just, uh, because of stems. So if I set it to that's then it's kind of the same as the top one, the um, the top waveform up here, but but it's still going to be different because if I change that to to no, and go over here, you may have to restart Virtual DJ. See, I either it worked here. So now when when up up here, you can see this is actually now based on something else because it's based on the stems instead of the frequency, but doesn't really work to just hoover down here. So let me just. We start virtual today once again. And it's now I have them down here as well. And this can actually be, be a great setup, I think, because this, of course, tells a whole lot about the track because it's based on stems. So these colors will tell you something about whether drums are red, where, where there's no drums, where there are no vocals, and stuff like that. So this may be the setting that you want. It actually may be. So, if that's of course totally up to you, but let's look at some of the other options. So if I go into the settings once again, change the waveform here, and uh, I see, well, no, actually I want it to be a uh, frequency based. So uh, like this, and then let me just restart virtual GD one more time. So we now see them frequency based, including if we load a track. So now they're frequency based again, and uh, is there any more you can change? Well, actually there are, because you can uh, also look at the, the color scheme, if you will. So that's the, this uh, colored waveforms setting here. Um, that's currently set to neutral. So you can set that to, for instance, monochrome. And then if I load a track, you can see it turns into monochrome. But this thing, well, it's basically just blue, right? And red on the other deck. But that won't affect these down here. That's an interesting little thing. So in this case, they're not the same. But if I change it to ultra blue, you would see they change down here when I hover over them. And if I grab one, it'll also change up here to ultra blue. Same with infrared. And this is just per deck. So these are uh, other ones. I use neutral mostly, so like this. Uh, when I look at the waveform. But like I said, it could be very interesting to try to do the stems one, the one that's that's not based on frequency, to see if it actually gives me more information down here. It may. I'm just not really used to it, but it may. So I'm going to look into that, definitely. Uh, finally, this kind of column, the waveform column, doesn't just exist here in the, in the browser section. It's also on some of the, the side ones over here. So if I go into side list, for instance, you can see that also have the waveform. You have to set it up separately in here. Uh, so you don't have to have it. So I can disable it, and then it's not, not going to be in here, but it's still going to be in the browser section. So that's that's all uh, up to you, but I've already set it up so that it's also in the site list here, right? So that's another place where you can have the waveform. 
You can also have it in, on this uh, preview a pane where they recommend the next tracks. So you see right now I only have the, the waveform on this little thing. Uh, it's not on uh, all the other tracks yet. But uh, so the recommendation lists can also have the waveform. The same thing with the Automix. So if I grab a few tracks here and throw them into Automix, you can see it can also have the waveform again, set it up separately. Finally, the karaoke one can also have the waveform, as you can see, I've already set it up too. So that may also be interesting regarding uh, the karaoke tracks that you play. But this was really all about the waveform and some of the settings you can use and what uh, some of the that may be confusing a little bit when setting it up because it doesn't really happen right away. So how do you get it up and running? And you probably need to restart Visual DJ a few times while testing which look and feel you want for it and stuff like that. But once you have it up and running like I have now, it'll basically just work. And all the tracks that are already analyzed with it or all the tracks that you're actually playing most of the time will have this waveform pretty fast and then it will just work.